If you're a complete beginner with lettering, what I'd like to talk to you today is about your paper choice. It's very, very important. Now you may notice that the practice sheets that we give you with Simply Lettering Magazine are actually very, very smooth, almost to the point of being glossy. There's a reason for that, okay? We need you to have the smoothest possible paper so that you do not damage your pens. Now, if you use a paper that has a grit to it, that would be your regular copy paper that you would usually put in your printer. You are very, very quickly going to damage the pens that you've got. Now, the bit that confuses people is very often when you feel any paper, it will feel smooth to a point. So this can be where you think, well, actually, my printer paper is absolutely fine. I'm going to use that. But what you don't realize is there's tiny, tiny little particles within the grain there that are going to fray up the nibs of your pens. So to keep your nibs as pristine as possible and make your lettering as beautiful as possible as well, there's a few different papers that I would strongly recommend. So first of all, my absolute favorite just for practicing on is a Rodea pad. Now these are available on Craft Stash, so look for the black and yellow. There's often different um, covers available and on the inside you'll get some that are plain, like mine. You can have them with dots, which are great for lining up. You can have them with grids and you can have them lined. So Rodea, now this is a vellum paper. So when you feel it, it does feel ultra, ultra smooth. So it's beautiful for your brush pens. Another one, if maybe you're looking to start practicing with just plain individual sheets, is one that you can actually pick up at most supermarkets. Now this is what I call, it's HP Color Choice. It's actually a laser printer paper. So not one that goes in most printers, but a laser one, you'll notice when you feel it, it's extra, extra smooth. So this is also what I use for um, practicing when I need a bright white um, for sketching things out, or if I need to cut it down because I don't want to cut the sheets in my beautiful Rodea pad. So there's one to have a look for. That's HP Color Choice. It's a red and white packet. I believe you can also get it on Amazon as well. So something else as well, if you look at tracing paper, very often tracing paper, regular tracing paper will have a grit to it. So what you actually want to go for is uh, parchment. Um, this is just some parchment that I use. It's very, very fine, but if you're using the templates in the back of the um, Simply Me Lettering magazine, this is the sort of thing you may want to start going over with, okay? Also, if, you're use if you don't have a light board, tracing paper is brilliant go for parchment. It's a little bit more money often, but it's got that smooth texture. It's not going to damage your bristles on your, or your nibs on your pens. Now you'll see through the magazine, there's lots of techniques that use watercolors, one of my favorite mediums. So for that, you need watercolor paper. And we all know that watercolor paper has a texture. In fact, it has a really rough texture. You don't even need to query this. You know it's already too rough, rough for your brush pens. So what we do with this is we look for either pens that have bristles, so koi markers, if you've ever seen koi coloring markers, they actually have like little fibers that are just like a brush in the nib. You can absolutely use those or your regular paint brushes. So you'll find for many of the techniques that I use with watercolor paper, I will actually use a brush, a proper brush, not a brush pen. Okay, so that's the only way you can really get away with using watercolor paper with your brush lettering. So hopefully that's given you a rough idea of which papers you can and cannot use, and it will help you preserve the nibs of your pens as long as possible.